Today, I'm going to walk you through using OWASP Zap to break into a deliberately vulnerable web application by brute forcing a stay logged in cookie on this episode of Hackbyte. OWASP Zap is a really useful tool for anybody who wants to get into web application pen testing, but sometimes I find the documentation is a little bit lacking. So today we're going to take a beginner's perspective and use it to take on a challenge of trying to figure out how a stay logged in cookie works. Now when you log into a website, many will give you the ability to stay logged in. And that means if you were to go to a different Wi-Fi network or change your IP address, you would be able to access logged in resources no matter where you are. And that's really useful if you don't want to be constantly logged out every time you change locations. Now as a hacker, I can target this to bypass any sort of protection that might be on authentication. Meaning if I were to try to brute force the login, there might be brute force protection and my IP address might get banned. To get around this, we're going to sniff around and try to decode the cookie that were issued when we try to log into a deliberately vulnerable web application. To follow along, you can go to portswigger.net and check out the labs there that we'll be using and also download OWASP Zap. Once you have that, then we can get started. This project is sponsored by PCBWay, who offers amazing PCB manufacturing to quickly and easily bring your PCB projects to life. Check out PCBWay.com to learn more about their PCB, 3D printing, and CNC services. To start out, we can go to portsfigure.net and access the Brute Forcing a Stay Logged In Cookie Lab, which you can find as soon as you log into a free account. Now, if you want to access the lab, you can simply click here, and you will also need to find the authentication lab passwords, which will give us all the clues we need in order to solve this lab. Now, upon loading the lab, you can see it loads this blog. And when we try to log in, it gives us a login portal. And this is kind of funny because we're actually not going to really focus on this login portal at all. Instead, we are going to attempt to find out whether this stay logged in setting here allows us to totally bypass any protections that might be built in and instead log into someone else's account and change their email to something that we want. So let's go ahead and use our tool today. I was fully intending to use Burp Suite, but unfortunately my license expired and nobody got back to me. So instead we are going to use OWASP Zap. Now, OWASP is very powerful and very cool. However, I found that a lot of the documentation is quite old and it can be difficult to find a good walkthrough. So hopefully if you wanna use this tool, this will provide a good getting started point. So we're gonna go ahead and in the manual explorer, we're going to paste the endpoint we're interested in, which is this Academy Lab. And I'm also going to not enable the HUD. It is a really useful tool that unfortunately interferes with this lab sometimes by preventing you from being able to click on the selector box, which is kind of annoying. So this will open up and we can see in OWASP Zap that as soon as I do this, I can click on history and everything is being proxied. So I can see going back what is going on with the requests and the responses, which is really cool. So I'm going to log in with the username and password I was provided in this lab, which is Wiener, of course, and Peter. I'm going to set my stay logged in cookie, uh, and that should log me into my account. I can see I can change my email, and I can update it, and there we go. We have access to this account, but this is my account. I wanna get into Carlos's account in order to solve this lab. So I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna go back to OWASP and take a look at this post request in which I passed my username and my password and I received my special stay logged in cookie. So we can see my uh, stay logged in cookie, it expires at a certain time, but I can kind of just over uh, lay this right here, right mouse click, and we can examine just how this cookie is constructed. So I'm going to right mouse click, go to encode slash decode slash hash. And if I take a look, I can click on, well, actually it's right there. You can see that's my username. So I can see the very first part of this is it's simply base64 URL encoded. And that means that if we want to be able to brute force this, we're going to have to wrap this in a base64 encoding. So that's good to know. So we can see that it has my username, okay, but then it has this weird uh, number or this kind of string. So this to me looks like a type of hash. And to confirm this, 
we know that my password is Peter. So if I go over here, I can take a look at this hash and just remember it's 51DC and it ends with 770. I'll go over to hash. I can type in my password and I can see the MD5 hash is 51DC3 and then it ends with 770. So this is the same thing. We basically just hashed my password and put it at the end of my username. So Okay, some developer was like, oh, all right, I'm not allowed to put the password in here, so I'll just hash it and no one will ever be able to do anything bad. Well, okay, let's do something bad. So we figured out how this works. And now we can use the subsequent get request as a way of breaking into Carlos's account. So let's go ahead and first confirm that we cannot access this endpoint um, slash my account without being logged in. So I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna paste it here and let's see what happens. Okay, we see that nothing happened. It redirected us to the login page. So we cannot access that endpoint unless we have our stay logged in cookie. So that is perfect for our attack. So I'm gonna go back to OWASP and we're going to use this. So I'm going to first select the part that I wanna modify and that is going to be our special stay logged in cookie. So uh, we have that right here. And once I highlight this, I can right mouse click go to fuzz, and we are going to set up our fuzzing attack. So you can see this has automatically been selected as the variable that I want to uh, change in the request. But if I want to do something else, then I can just highlight it and then add it if I want to do so. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to add a payload. Now the payload here is going to be the list of passwords that I'm going to use for brute forcing. So if I go back to this lab, I can see that I have all of these right here, nice and neat for me. And this will limit the amount of time you use, uh, you know, on these labs, just passing pay payloads that just will not work. So this password list does contain the real password somewhere, is it? And that is, of course, a limitation of brute force attacks. So if uh, this password is just really, really complicated, then this will obviously be much harder. But Carlos isn't a very sophisticated person, so maybe, maybe we'll be able to get in. So if we click this multi-line thing, then this will append everything together as one line. You do not want to do that in this attack, so do not do so. And wait, we can't just send the passwords, we have to actually process them. So if I click on this and then click on processors, I'll be able to click on add. And we remember that the first thing we need to do with all these guesses is we need to hash it because our smart developer made it so we're not really passing the password, we're passing a hash of it. I can generate a pre preview and see that yes, this is in fact successfully hashing the password. So I'm going to add that. So now we've done that, but wait, it has the username in front of it. So I click on add, I will go to po uh, prefix string, and then I'll add Carlos because that is our simulated victim. And I'll generate a preview and I can see, okay, now this is looking really good. But there's one last step. We need to wrap this in a base64 encoding. So I'm gonna to go to add one more time and add to base64 encode, generate a preview, and then this is looking very much like the cookie that was generated by our server. So in order to break into this, we should be able to now press OK, OK, and we have everything necessary to start the fuzzer and try to craft these cookies and let us access this endpoint that will only let us in if we have the correct cookie for Carlos's account. So let's start our fuzzer and we can see that our original request was sent first and this received a 200 OK and we're getting all these 302 found. So we can assume that 200 OK is what we're looking for and there it is right there. So that means that we have successfully found the stay logged in cookie. So how are we gonna go about changing our browser's request and making it so that it passes this successful stay logged in cookie? Because do I want Carlos's password? No, I don't care. I just want access to Carlos's account. So let's try to go to this endpoint in the browser, but instead of letting it go all the way and getting redirected to that login page, let's instead press this button to set a breakpoint. And what that will do is it will make it so that uh, any request that's going through here will first have to be okayed by us and we can modify that. So Mozilla will probably try to do some stuff. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, I'm going to paste this, press enter, and there we go. Okay, so we have this get request and it doesn't have our magic cookie yet. So let's go back to our uh, request and responses and that's this one right here. And let's just copy this whole request and we're going to replace this break request with one, oops, with one that has our magic cookie. So we'll paste this in here. We can see it has our stay logged in cookie that we brute forced. And we are going to then press this kind of play button 
in order to send it. And uh, we'll continue to press this in order to load the page. And once we're done uh, with this breakpoint, we can just press this button in order to end it. So I'll press right there. And if I go over here, we can see, congratulations, you solved the lab. I am now logged in as Carlos. And let's go ahead and set this as our huh, new email. Buckrucker at trucks.net. Gonna update my email. And there we go. We have successfully compromised this account by totally bypassing authentication and instead crafting a valid stay logged in cookie. Today, we demonstrated just how easy it was to break into a vulnerable web application that doesn't properly secure its stay logged in cookies. Now, if you're a developer, you should take note that MD5 does not equal securing someone's password and an attacker armed with a tool like OWASP Zap wouldn't really be slowed down at all by this sort of hashing or encoding. If you are a pen tester, then you should be aware that OWASP Zap is an incredibly useful resource and you should definitely check it out for any sort of web application pen testing. That's all we have for this episode. If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can hit me up on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.